This is an announcement for attendees in this Zoom meeting. Let's practice operating Zoom before the next talk. Uh, in questions and answers, uh, we use uh, raising your hand feature in Zoom. So attendees, uh, at the bottom of the Zoom screen, you can see raise, uh, sorry, uh, at the bottom of the Zoom screen, you can raise your hand from participants icon. So first, you first click participants icon. And next, this is for practice. Please raise your hand. Oh, thank you. Thank you, Moraos, Moraes. Thank you, raising your hand. So this is practice time for raising hand. And we use raising hand in questions and answer session. So, oh, so for practice, please click first uh, participants icon in the bottom Zoom window. And please click, please raise your hand in Zoom. Oh, thank you. Hari san, thank you. Oh, ah, thank you, everyone. We use this feature in questions and answers session. Thank you. Thank you, Craig. Thank you. You you can uh, you can uh, thank you very much. Uh, practice is end. Thank you. And uh, you can write your questions and uh, thoughts in the Zoom chat during this talk. So this is another practice in Zoom chat. Uh, click chat icon in the bottom of the window and uh, please please chat some message like hello world or something you can write quest your questions and thoughts in the zoom chat during the talk oh, thank you thank you i can see your hello chat thank you very much And this is an announcement for attendees from YouTube Live. The hashtag for this room is PyConJP1. Please feel free to tweet your thoughts and observations with the hashtag. Now we are going to start Ms. Nina's presentation. The title is The Python Community Stronger Together. The presentation time is 30 minutes, including questions and answers. Before the presentation, the speaker will read the paper for a microphone test. So Nina, uh, please, please turn on your video camera and unmute your mic. Thank you. Do you see the reading items? Uh, I'm chatting the link. Yes, I have them. Should oh, I read okay. them now? Uh, yes, please okay. read for microphone test. My name is Nina Zakarenko. The title of my presentation is The Python Community is Stronger Together. My presentation will be in English. The presentation materials are in English. I will publish the presentation materials I agree to have my picture taken during my presentation and I will comply with the PyCon Japan code of conduct. Thank you. So please share your screen and we are checking the audio. Staff Kuramoto san ni kakunin desu. Ponsei no mondai nasa sou ni omou desu kere domo, moshi nani ka kininaru ten arimashi tara osirase kudasai. Thank you, Nina. Uh, we can see your slide now. Oh, some window. Oh, uh, so, and uh, audio is clear, no problem. So, please start your talk. Uh, to attendees, everyone, please welcome Ms. Nina with applause. 
Please start your talk. Nina, uh, uh, your mic is muted. Okay, can you hear me now? Yeah, I have the, the habit of always muting my mic, you know, preemptively, but this time I should probably unmute myself. Uh, hello, PyCon Japan. I am so glad to be able to join you virtually. My name is Nina Zakarenko, and um, one day I hope I can give this talk uh, in, in Japan, in Tokyo. I've been able to visit a few times, and I really love it. So maybe next year. In the meantime, let's see. There we go. So who am I? I work at Microsoft as a Python developer advocate, and my focus is on making Azure and VS Code better to use for Python developers everywhere. I've also written software for over a decade, and I've worked at companies like Meetup, Reddit, and HBO. If you want to reach out, please feel free to follow me on Twitter at NNJA, and lately, I've also been doing some live coding and interviews on Twitch at NNJAIO. Now, what does the Python community mean to me? Well, I started my career as a Java developer, and I really didn't know about open source. I didn't know about meetups. I didn't know about community or events. My job was just a means to an end. I didn't do a lot of fun or creative programming. And to be honest, I was falling out of love with tech. I had uh, bad experiences in the industry and I just wasn't sure if it was still the right job for me. Now, back in 2013, I decided to go to PyCon US. And I did that because I heard good things about it. I heard good things about the Python community, but uh, I was really afraid because at the time I was mostly writing Java. I think I had written maybe a hundred lines of Python. And I was so afraid that when I went to my first conference that I would get made fun of or that people would think I was a noob or didn't know what I was talking about. And so I showed up and I was very shy. And to my surprise, it wasn't like I had expected at all. Uh, a lot of the people that I met were really excited to welcome me into the community, to um, help me with my projects, to offer to teach and mentor. And it, it really just kind of changed the trajectory of my life. Uh, the Python community changed my career. I've now made some lifelong friends in the community. And most recently, I've been elected to the board of directors of the Python Software Foundation. Uh, and it really just made me fall in love with programming all over again. Uh, here on the left, you'll see a picture from uh, PyCon 2019 with some PyLadies Tokyo organizers and members. I know that some of them are watching the talk now. So hi, good to see you. And um, just on a side note, whenever I look at pictures like this from before March, I'm just like, oh my god, our faces are so close together. <laughs> That's uh, not something that you'll see uh, in, in current times. But uh, it was really great to get to know folks from all over the world. And really, I want to make sure that I am part of um, bringing that same experience to others in the Python community. So everybody who welcomed me and helped me and mentored me, I want to do the same for others and enable that for other people. Uh, unfortunately, a lot has changed in the past few months. Uh, so in February, I was planning my trip to PyCon US. It would have been my eighth in the world. Uh, I would have seen my friends from all over the world, including uh, PyCon Tokyo, uh, PyLadies Tokyo organizers, uh, and really folks that I've met from, from everywhere. But the world is different now. So how do we adapt? 
Well, there is one positive to this. And it's now that these communities, these worldwide communities have gone remote. So that means that I can join you as a speaker at PyCon Japan from my living room in sunny California. But that also means that you can participate in a global event that you might have not had the opportunity to otherwise. That means that you could participate in a country that you might not be um, able to travel to. Well, now you can. Uh, this past year, PyCon Africa was remote, EuroPython was remote. You can join these Python communities and conferences remotely for new culture, new experiences, new friends. I've been able to speak at some meetups in Chicago and Seattle, and it's been a great experience for me. And it's also an opportunity to join smaller, tight-knit communities. So if you're interested in that, you can join uh, PyCon Australia in the future. It's coming up not this weekend, but next. And also PyCascades Remote in 2021. It will be happening at the end of February. And I would like to see you there because I'm co-organizing. So that conference is pretty special for me. You also want to stay in touch and stay connected. We've all been in a position where we feel more lonely, more isolated than ever. Maybe we're not really in a position to see our friends. And even if we're staying in touch with the people that we already know, it's a lot harder to make new friends and uh, meet new people that you might not have known before. So what can we do about this? We can chat with each other. Now, the Python Discord uh, has 95,000 members. And it's a really lovely community. The organizers are incredibly kind. They want to run their Discord so that it's centered towards education. There is a code of conduct. And um, it's really a great place for Python developers who are new or experienced to join in. There's the Adafruit Discord. So if you're interested in hardware or CircuitPython or electronics, that is a, uh, a great community, a great place to hang out. And there's also the Python at Microsoft Discord. And I will make the slides available after the talk so that you can check out all of the links. Uh, we made the Python at Discord um, Python at Microsoft Discord available for PyCon US, but it's been so successful that we've just decided to keep it around. So if you have any questions about Azure or VS Code, that's a great place to ask uh, the people who actually work on the products. There are also community slacks. So I know that PyCon Japan has its own Slack and a lot of these smaller, tighter knit communities are present on Slack as well. And lastly, you can uh, find members of the Python community on Twitter. I know that many of them, myself included, we have our DMs open. So if you'd like to send me a message, if you have a question, uh, please go ahead and do that. Now, a way that I've decided to try to stay in touch with the community is by uh, starting an interview show called Python T. So it's a weekly live interview show and it happens on Twitch. And the goal of this show was to have something that was kind of like the hallway track. So for those of you who've been to in-person Python conferences before, you know that part of it is going to talks, but another equally important part of a Python conference is the hallway track, meaning that you run into someone in the hallway that you haven't seen in a long time and you ask them how they're doing, or maybe somebody wrote a blog post that really helped you or helped you troubleshoot something and you see them in the, in the hallway at a conference and you can say hello and, and, and thank you. So we've had a lot of virtual events, but we haven't had anything that's quite replicated uh, that experience of the hallway track. So when my show is live on Twitch, 
folks can come and hang out and chat and ask questions as we're on the air. And it's really fun. It makes the experience really interactive. And I've been lucky enough to have some truly fantastic guests. So on the left was Luca Schlanga, who is a Python core developer who came on to talk about uh, typing in Python and synthesizers. The middle is Diana Rodriguez, who talked about how she uses Python to help monitor and manage her diabetes. And then on the right hand side, I had guest Al Swigert, who wrote the very popular book, Automate uh, the Boring Stuff with Python. And then tomorrow I have special guest Tanya Allard. Unfortunately, it's a little bit late in your time zone. And for that, I apologize. I think Friday at 10 a.m. is maybe like 1 a.m. in Japan. But if you're a night owl, please tune in. And the link is twitch.tv slash NNJAIO. Uh, another interesting thing that's been happening in the community right now is that many experienced Python developers are live coding on Twitch. So these might not be time zone friendly, but you can watch the recordings. Although if you're able to catch it live, it's awesome. It's interactive, you can chat, you can ask questions, and you can watch these really experienced developers uh, implement features and solve problems in their own environment. So I find it really educational. And you know, when you are feeling lonely and you're missing the connection, it's, it's fun to drop in and come hang out and chat. Uh, so Anthony Stoidel is Anthony Wright's code. He does a lot of work on um, pre-commit and a lot of other open source projects. Al Swiger also live codes. And uh, one of my favorite code streams is Dr. Sarah Kaiser. She um, does live coding around uh, Q-sharp, which is a quantum, uh, quantum computing language. And occasionally she talks about Python integrations as well. So she's uh, brilliant and also very good at explaining complex topics. So I recommend her stream. Now, how can you support the community? Most importantly, you have to remember to support yourself before you are able to support the community. And it's really important to remember self-care during this time. It's okay to not be okay. We are not robots. What's going on in the world is stressful. It's confusing. It's alienated, uh, alienating. We feel lonely. So you have to take time for self-care and take time to recharge your own batteries. So if it's safe to go on a socially distanced walk in your country, maybe take advantage of it and try some activities with friends. Uh, you can learn new things, maybe learn a new programming language or research what's new in Python 3.9 that you're excited about, or maybe learn a new language that's not a programming language. Um, shocking, I know. You can also pick up a new hobby. It might be a good time to learn to play an instrument or draw. There is plenty that you can choose from that is calming and relaxing and maybe not necessarily um, something that you have to do in front of the computer. Most importantly, depending on where you live, uh, we are all faced with a lot of bad news lately. And it can really kind of feel like the situation is dire, that things are not going to get better, but that's not true. So remember to take breaks from the news. You're not required to watch it 24 seven. And uh, I know that has gone a long way towards improving my own mental health. Sorry, thirsty time for a drink. Now, there's, um, there's something that does a really great job of explaining um, one of the concepts of self-care. It's called the spoon theory. And it's a metaphor used to describe 
the amount of mental and physical energy that a person has available for activities of living and productive tasks. So things like uh, brushing your teeth or going to work or uh, writing a method in software. Uh, this theory is especially used to explain the reduced amount of energy that may result from a disability or a chronic condition. So you can think of the spoons as a representation, a visual representation used to show how much energy you might have left for tasks uh, in the day. And I wanna say that during COVID, many of us have been experiencing symptoms of depression and anxiety and loneliness. And you really want to take this into account when planning your day because that might mean that even though you've never had an issue with this before, all of a sudden you find yourself with less energy, less capacity to do what you used to do and uh, less spoons, you can think of it that way. If you overdo it, you really risk burning out. So it's important to monitor your energy level and be compassionate with yourself if you're not able to be as productive as you used to be because we really are living in uh, different times. Now, if you do have the spoons and only if you have spoons to spare, you can think about ways to give back and to volunteer, but careful. How? You can contribute. You can contribute to open source software, to uh, volunteering at conferences and events. You can speak at a conference or meetup. You can be a mentor or a mentee, depending on where you are in your software career. And you can even organize your own event. If there's something that you're particularly interested in, you can try your hand in seeing if there's anyone else who's interested. There are also a lot of really fantastic open source projects and communities. One of my favorites is CircuitPython, which is a variant of Python that runs on microcontrollers. And using CircuitPython, I was able to make the LED earrings that I'm wearing in the picture. Uh, now my earrings run Python, and you can see the source code. And if you're interested in um, seeing how it works, but CircuitPython is truly a great community. They welcome newcomers. And if you want to learn something new, if you want to uh, experiment with Python on hardware, that would be a great opportunity. You can also contribute to Jupyter Notebooks or Core Python or Python Packaging. And know that your contributions don't necessarily have to be code. Documentation contributions are just as important. And so are translations. So if you speak more than one language or you write in more than one language, a contribution of translations would be always greatly appreciated. And then that's something that you can share with a lot of other people. And these are just some examples. There are lots of other amazing projects that you could work on. And lucky for you, you can join the PyCon Japan Sprint which is um, currently going on. The details are at pycon.jp slash 2020 slash sprint. So this is a great opportunity to join one of the many remote sprints that are happening at uh, different conferences. Now, mentorship is crucial. I know that I would not have gotten as far in my career as I did if it wasn't for the mentors that supported me. When I first started giving conference talks, there were so many high, uh, kind people who helped me review my slides or gave me advice. And now that I'm in a position to, I do the same for others. Um, so if you have the cycles to spare and you would like to volunteer and you would like to share your knowledge, make yourself available. Uh, in the past, when I had the free time, I put out a call for mentor uh, to, to look for people to mentor on Twitter and I got a lot of really great responses. Lean on members in your community to amplify your requests. And this is also a great opportunity if you're just learning Python to ask around and see if anyone is available to mentor. Because it 
at least to me, it's certainly uh, a lot more fun to chat with someone than it is to read a tutorial. Now, I wanted to talk to you a little bit about the Python Software Foundation or the PSF. The mission of the Python Software Foundation is to promote, protect, and advance the Python programming language and to support and facilitate the growth of a diverse and international community of Python developers. So what exactly does the PSF do? Well, it actually does uh, quite a lot of things. It holds intellectual property uh, rights, meaning the trademarks for the Python logo. It maintains the licenses around the Python source code. It also runs PyCon US and contributes grants and programs for projects, meetups, and conferences. I do want to point out that one of the amazing things of, a, of the PSF nonprofit running PyCon US is that um, for those of you who have been able to attend, you'll know that the audience is really diverse. It's not like a, the usual corporate uh, conference where you just see salespeople or you just see people in suits. The range of ages at a Python conference is diverse. It's everybody from people who are maintained, uh, established in their, their work to students and the reason that that can happen is because the PSF can offer uh, first tier tickets, so much cheaper tickets for students to be able to come and participate. And the PSF also offers a lot of discounted tickets and grants to folks who might not be able to otherwise uh, participate or come, which means that PyCon US is a conference where you're pretty likely to see someone who doesn't necessarily look like you, somebody who's not from the same country as you or socioeconomic status. And uh, that was definitely one of the things that drew me to PyCon and to the Python community. I really, really appreciate that. The PSF also supports and maintains python.org, uh, PyPI, Python documentation. So both, um, with uh, infrastructure and uh, the monetary support. It also runs work groups to improve the Python ecosystem. It grants awards, for example, PSF Fellow and Community Service Awards. And then the board of directors of the foundation helps to guide the foundation. So I'm a newly elected board member as of, I think it's been three months now, time has really been flying. And I really want to reiterate my goals as a member of the board of directors of the um, Python community. I want to help the Python community run remote events and not just from a, uh, a code perspective, but really like how do we run remote events where the spirit of the community comes through, where all of the things that are wonderful and lovely about um, attending Python conferences and events in person, how do we figure out how to translate that into a remote medium? So I'm looking to uh, set best practices and make recommendations. And I also want to both keep and help the uh, PSF and the community become even more diverse than it already is because the more different voices that we have in the community, the better our language will be. And it's not just gender, but also different races, different countries, different ages. How do we make the Python community be the melting pot that it is? Now, how can you support the PSF? You can volunteer. You can join a work group. There are a lot of work groups currently available, like the Code of Conduct, the Grants Work Group, Infrastructure, Education. You don't necessarily need to be uh, on the PSF board to join one of these working groups. So if you have the cycles to spare, it's worth looking into. 
You can contribute to open source, both documentation or code or translations. Uh, you can donate if you are able to. You can uh, either you become a member, make a small donation, or occasionally the PSF uh, runs promotions for things like hum Humble Bundle. And your donations make their way back into the community. So those donations are continued to use for things like grants for different meetups and conferences and events and for supporting infrastructure, uh, et cetera. So um, if you're able to, uh, it's one of, the, one of the ways that you can support. You can also follow the PSF on Twitter for news and announcements. So what's next in this new age? Well, we really need to be kind to each other and be patient with others because you don't really know what their home situation is like. Maybe somebody is working from home who didn't used to, doesn't have the ideal setup to work from home or all of a sudden has to take care of a toddler. So you really don't know what uh, someone is dealing with and it's a great time to kind of be patient and be understanding. Find ways to support others in the best way that you can while also taking time for self-care and supporting yourself. And remember that we are all in this together and the Python community will come out stronger on the other side if we support each other because the Python community is stronger together. Thank you all so much. I will make the slides available after the talk and you should be able to download them and follow any uh, links that you're interested in. You can also follow me on Twitter at NNJA where I, where I will post a copy of the slides. And if you'd like, please tune in for my code streams or for Python T on my uh, Twitch, NNJAIO. And if you, um, if you can, if you have stories to share about the Python community, I would love to hear from you. So thank you all so much. It was such a pleasure. Thank you for having me. And I think we have uh, time for questions. Yes, thank you for your talk. And uh, we have a few minutes for questions and answer session. Please raise your hand in Zoom if you have any questions for Ms. Nina. Please raise your hand if you have questions to Ms. Nina. And uh, so this is my impression uh, listening your talk. Uh, uh, so this uh, to the COVID-19 impact is very severe, but uh, I, I hear your talk, uh, I notice, I find that uh, this is an opportunity for our community to tie stronger together. So uh, this is my impression. Thank you very much, your talk. Thank you for having me. It was really great to be here. Is anyone who have questions to Nina? Uh, if you have any questions, please raise your hand at Zoom. In chat window, uh, many clapping. In chat window, we can see many clapping. Uh, number eight means clapping in Japanese slang. I love that. And, uh, So uh, I, so in your slide, uh, you you help Python community remote events. So if there are other opportunities, please join uh, Japan Python community event. Uh, in Japan, uh, many many Python communities. There are many many Python communities. So if you can uh, available, uh, please join another. Python community event in Japan. 
Yeah, I would love to. Uh, I think it was last year, the Pi Ladies in Tokyo took me Ooh. out for dinner in, in Japan. So I was very lucky. Yes, when, when One year I'll come back, I promise. Okay, so there is, there is no one who have questions. So it seems uh, there are no questions and uh, the uh, duration, 30 minutes is over. So the time is up. Uh, we will end this talk, Nina's talk. Thank you very much for your talk, Hi, Nina. You. Uh, everybody, please give a big round of applause. So, oh, long eight, long eight to the chat window, to the speaker, Nina san. Thank you, Nina. Thank you very much. Oh, too long eight. <laughs> big applause in chat window now. Thank you, your talk. <laughs>